So um, there, we do have a few presenters um, who are with us. I'm not sure if Lynn is on the line yet. Um, yeah. Reverend Lynn Hargrove from New Covenant Presbytery. She's the uh, executive presbyter there, will be presenting. Uh, Reverend Sally Watson, who is with us, she'll be presenting uh, as well. And um, Timothy, Reverend Tim Blodgett, um, the uh, executive presbyter for Eastern Oklahoma Presbytery, will also be presenting um, today. Uh, I want you to also meet Mr. Fabulous, Thomas Riggs, <laughs> who's named himself Mr. Fabulous. Hey. Thomas is gonna be serving as our facilitator on Zoom today. So if somehow you can't find your unmute button, Thomas will mute you when it's necessary, okay? Um, he'll also be taking a, watching closely the waiting room, the chat box, and um, any time, any other issues that you might have, if you have questions or anything like that, he'll help us stay together, facilitated as a group, okay? Um, and I have asked Tim Blodgett to open us with prayer. Tim? Thank you, Valerie. Um, one of my favorite uh, prayer books that I go back to again and uh, again is Opening Prayers, uh, Colics in Contemporary Language. Um, and as we are approaching Pentecost and the movement of the Holy Spirit and how much uh, General Assembly is uh, often one of those uh, places where the Holy Spirit moves among us, I think these words um, are very fitting. So as we begin today, let us pray. God of majesty and glory, you bring us to the day that crowns our joyful Easter feast. Open for us the fountain of living waters promised to the faithful. That the outpouring of the Spirit may reveal Christ's glory and enlighten all who wait in hope for the glorious day of redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. First thing I would like for you to hear us say, hear me say right now, is that this session is not intended, not in any way, intended to take the place of the mandatory training required by General Assembly staff. You are required to take part in one of the 18 different training sessions being offered. This is hopefully just a little bit of basics to get you started. Um, and so please hear me say, you still have to do that training. Today, we're gonna give you some experience with Zoom. I, I can't imagine that anyone by now has, doesn't have at least some experience with Zoom, but we're gonna give you a little bit of extra experience with Zoom, some orientation to the PCUSA as a system, basics about PC biz, that's where you find the business of GA, and where you'll go as commissioners, where you'll go to vote. Um, and we hope we'll be able to help you understand how and why beyond the obvious, why this year is different. Um, I think some of you may have heard me say uh, earlier, I promise you'll have it, we'll do individual um, introductions in just a moment. There are currently uh, 53 participants in the meeting and two waiting. So there's a lot of us. Yes, we're still gonna do individual introductions. Um, we know Zoom may look and act a little bit differently uh, during the assembly itself, but we wanted you to get a chance to become accustomed. So, first, I don't know of anyone. Can we see anyone who is attending? I'm just scrolling through my screens here. I don't think so, but I'm, I'm gonna say it anyway. If anyone is attending this meeting by telephone only, please know that that telephone access will not be sufficient for the General Assembly. If you need assistance with access to technology, 
I suggest you contact your presbytery office. So let's practice a couple of things. If you look to the bottom of your main Zoom screen, you'll see an icon called Reactions. If you click on that icon, you can either choose clap, it looks kind of like this, or a thumbs up emoji. These are a couple of simple ways um, to do just that, thumbs up, clap, whatever. So let's try, all, let's try that together. If you're a commissioner from a presbytery in Texas, give us a thumbs up. How about Arkansas? Louisiana. Oklahoma. Where's Elaine? There she is. Elaine, where's your thumbs up? Can you find it? She's on a borrowed computer too. Okay. It's not here. You gotta hover over it. Okay, so you're looking at the bottom of your screen for the icon that says reactions. At the bottom of your Zoom screen. How's everybody else doing? Anybody else have problems? It's not, Valerie, it's not there. It's not on this computer. Okay. Then we may need to look at getting you uh, an update on your Zoom. So let's, let's keep going. And then uh, Tim is aware now and we'll start looking for an update for you, okay? Um, okay, now we are gonna go back to the bottom, look back to the bottom of your main screen and click on the icon that says chat. That will open a small window where you can type in a message to everyone or to specific individuals in the meeting. If you don't have experience with this, it's worth noting that the full contents of the chat box for this meeting and most Zoom meetings are auto sent to the host of the meeting at the end of the meeting, even the private messages. So if you want to have back channel conversation, I hope that you'll stick to a text message. Um, and uh, I hope that you'll type any questions you may have in the chat box, and Thomas will be watching and making each presenter aware of anything that comes up pertinent to our conversation. <laughs> um, let's see. During the course of this and other Zoom meetings, you may have experienced, or will certainly today, experience a, a screen share where someone chooses to share what's on their computer with the group. Um, what generally happens is that the presenter shares their screen and it completely fills your screen with theirs. And you, I know I have in the past, felt like, oh, I can't get to what I need. One way to get out of that quickly that you can make note of is to hit your, the escape button on your keyboard. That will make your, the Zoom screen smaller and then you can see the things that are on your screen simultaneously. So that could be helpful for you. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. At the bottom of your screen, you should also see the word and icon for participants. Click that and it will open a window an additional window with a list of those people attending the meeting. Notice at the bottom of that window are two very important buttons. The, because you're muted, there's a button that will now say unmute, and then there's another button that will say raise hands. These allow you to mute and unmute yourself or raise and lower your hand. The raised hand will show up in the participants window only. And this is the method that we'll be using when we're requesting, when I request to call on you or if you want to request to ask a question. 
So let's see, I'm gonna close my chat box. And I am, I am going to now ask everyone, oh, I'm gonna clear everything. And then I'm gonna ask everyone to please raise your hand. When everyone's hands are raised, then I am going to go through the participant list one person at a time, ask you to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Your name, the presbytery that you um, are representing to General Assembly, and the place where you live and serve. Now, I just want to remind you that we have 55 people on the call. So, if it would be really helpful time-wise, because we only want to be on here for an hour and a half, would be really helpful time-wise if we stuck to that, okay? Your name, your presbytery, and where you live and serve. Let's, and then, and then once you've done that, if you will hit the button that says lower your hand, but only until then. Let's start with Jim Freeman. You have to unmute yourself. Unmute. Hi, uh, Jim Freeman, uh, Pines Presbytery, and I serve Broadmoor Presbyterian Church in Shreveport, Louisiana, northwest corner. Thank you. you lower working. your hand. Now lower your hand. Awesome. How about Beeman Floyd? I am Beeman Floyd. I'm with Mission Presbytery. I serve as a ruling elder at Shepherd of the Hills Presbyterian Church in Austin, Texas. Zachary, Sh I just lost the name. Things. There you go. Um, somebody cleared the hands. Okay, I'm from representing Mission Presbytery, and I'm from First Presbyterian Church in Austin, Texas. Thank you. Okay, Forbes Baker. Unmute. Oh, man. Okay, Forbes Baker, I'm from uh, <clears throat> Presbytery New Covenant in Houston, Texas. And I'm a ruling elder on session at First Presbyterian Church, Sugarland. Fabulous. Thanks, Forbes. You want to lower okay. your hands? Can you find it? Awesome. Donna Rose. Donna Rose, Pines Presbytery, First Presbyterian Church, Natchitoches, Louisiana, ruling elder. Super. Cheryl Taylor. Oops, let's lower your hand, Donna. Hi, I'm Cheryl Taylor. I'm uh, with Grace Presbytery, and I serve as the pastor at First Presbyterian Church of Rockwall. Ah, welcome, Cheryl. Glad you're here. Louis. Lucas. Lucas, I'm sorry, Lucas. Hi, I'm Lucas Keppel. Um, I am teaching elder at Trinity Presbyterian Church in Bixby, Oklahoma, part of Eastern Oklahoma Presbytery and an alternate. Awesome, thanks. Marie Maynard O'Connell. Hi, uh, I'm Marie Maynard O'Connell. Uh, I'm from uh, Arkansas Presbytery and I live in Little Rock but I serve Park Hill Presbyterian Church as their pastor in North Little Rock. Super, thanks. Chuck Weaver. Hi, I'm Chuck Weaver. I'm an elder at First Presbyterian in Waco, and I am serving as an alternate for Grace Presbyterian this year. Fabulous, glad you're here, thank you. Can you lower your hand? Here in a minute, we'll go. I know that there are several people who don't have the hand, and I'm not sure why, but we will uh, try and get you called on here in a minute, okay? Um, Michelle Vetters. Unmute. Oh, 
it went back on. There you go. Okay. Michelle Vetters, teaching elder, Mission Presbytery, and I serve as a hospice chaplain. Wonderful, thank you. Karen Koppel. I'm Karen Koppel. I serve as a um, ruling elder at my church, First Presbyterian in Lubbock. <clears throat> and I am in Paladuro Presbytery. Um, I am also um, in the process of getting my certificate in ministry from Austin Presbytery. Oh, Austin cool. Seminary, rather. Sorry. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michelle and Karen, could you lower your hands for us? Kathy Lee Cornell? Um, uh, my name is Kathy Lee Cornell. I am uh, representing Grace Presbytery, and I serve at Preston Hollow Presbyterian Church in Dallas, Texas. Awesome. Thank you. Marsha McCaslin. Where is Marsha? She needs to unmute. Okay, I'm Marsha McCaslin. I Eastern Oklahoma Presbytery. I live in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and I'm the clerk of session at Eastern at Park Hill Presbyterian Church in Park Hill, Oklahoma, and an alternate. Awesome. Don't forget to lower your hand. <laughs> Ann Wilson. Hi, Ann Wilson. I am in New Covenant Presbytery. I live in Houston, and St. Philip Presbyterian is my home church. Yay. Parker Adamson. I'm Parker Adamson. I'm representing the Senate of the or Paladero Presbytery. Um, I'm at First Presbyterian Church, Plainview, Texas. Charlotte, love it. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Charlotte. Sorry. Charlotte Lovett, member of Indian Nations Presbytery. Um, that's in Oklahoma, and it would be very helpful if everybody would say what state your presbytery is in, for those of us who don't know. I am at Memorial Presbyterian Church in Norman, Oklahoma, and Vice Moderator for the Presbytery. I could send you a map, Charlotte. Um, let's see, we have one person waiting. Okay, Bill Rose. Okay, Bill Rose, ruling elder, El Paso, Texas, with Trace Rios Presbytery. Glad you're here, Bill. John Lemon. John Lemon, I'm in, in the Presbytery of New Covenant. I'm state clerk for judicial process, the Presbytery, and I'm a, I'm a lurker. I'm not a commissioner. I'm in a support role. But what is that role? Uh, uh, supports the commission to our commissioners. No, I mean, what's your title? Uh, oh, I said I was stated clerk of judicial process. Sorry, I missed that part. For the Presbytery. <laughs> I heard it was the last part. Okay. Tracy Spencer Brown. I'm Tracy Spencer Brown. I'm a minister of Gordon Sacrament from Trace Rios Presbytery. I live in Odessa, Texas, and I currently serve as executive pastor at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Odessa. Awesome. It's good to see you, Tracy. Tracy Evans? Hi, I'm Tracy Evans. I'm the stated clerk for Indian Nations Presbytery. 
and I'm a pastor in Norman, Oklahoma at Memorial Presbyterian. Awesome. Lane McCaslin. I'm Lay McCaslin, retired pastor, honorably retired pastor, and stated clerk for Eastern Oklahoma Presbytery, and Marsha McCaslin's husband. Don't forget to lower your hands, Lay. Mark Southard. I'm Mark Southard. I'm the stated clerk for Cimarron Presbytery, um, also uh, a, a commissioner this year, and I uh, am a commission pastor in Newkirk, Oklahoma. Scott Campbell. Hello, everyone. Um, Scott Campbell, Lubbock, Texas, Minister of Word and Sacrament and Executive Presbyter. Leslie Belden. Where'd you go? I did unmute. <laughs> And I did lower my hand. Okay. Uh, I'm Leslie Belden from uh, the Presbytery of Arkansas, which is in Arkansas. Thanks. Andrew Long. I'm Andrew Long. I'm pastor of the First Presbyterian Church in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, member of Cimarron Presbytery, uh, and, and proud recipient of a recent doctor in ministry degree. Woohoo. Gordon Edwards. I'm General Presbyter for Cimarron Presbytery, and here just resourcing for our commissioners. Welcome. Thanks, Gordon. Lynette Solomon? Uh, Lynette Solomon with Grace Presbytery in Texas. I live in Athens, Texas, and currently serve as a chaplain at Baylor University Medical Center Hospital in downtown Dallas. Glad you're here, Lynette. Tay Spain. Ooh, I hope I said that right. Ty Spain? Hi. Um, ah. Ty Spain from Tres Rios Presbytery and the Young Adult Advisory Delegate uh, serve at St. Paul Presbyterian Church in San Angelo, Texas. Awesome. Glad you're here. Scott Russell? Scott Russell, Mission Presbytery, Ruling Elder, Kerrville, Texas. Laura Grice. Laura Grice, uh, Teaching Elder Commissioner, New Covenant, uh, Presbytery of New Covenant, um, and I uh, live and serve in the uh, at the Woodlands Community. Well, I practically live there. Um, uh, the Woodlands Community Presbyterian Church in the Woodlands, Texas, outside of Houston. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Kevin Jones. I'm Kevin Jones. Uh, I'm at Mission Presbytery. I'm a teaching elder at First Presbyterian Church in Lampasas, Texas. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. Laura Neely Villarreal. Laura Neely Villarreal. Um, I'm in Mission Presbytery, serving as an alternate. And I'm a pastor at Parkway Presbyterian Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Super. Krista Brantley. Krista Brantley. I am a commissioner for Grace Presbytery. I'm a ruling elder and live in McKinney, Texas. Great. Glad you're here, Krista. Lisa Thanks. Patterson. I'm Lisa Patterson from, um, I'm an alternate from Grace Presbytery, and I serve as pastor, one of the pastors at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church in Denton, Texas. Thanks, Lisa. Jane Ells. I'm Jane Ells. I'm a ruling elder at the First Presbyterian Church in Winsboro, Texas. I, uh, I'm, I'll be an uh, alternate. I just finished my certificate in ministry and I'm waiting to become a commission pastor. Awesome. From Texas. Thanks, Jane. 
Stuart Smith. I'm Stuart Smith. Uh, General Presbyter for the Presbytery of Arkansas, and our office is located in Little Rock. Uh, Elaine Dodd. Looks like you found the hand to raise your hand. Our General Presbyter found the hand for me. He's a helpful person. We're masked, by the way, because we're sharing space at the Eastern Oklahoma Presbytery office, so we're practicing good social distancing. I'm Elaine Dodd. I'm a ruling elder at Southminster Presbyterian Church in Tulsa, and I also serve on the Eastern Oklahoma Presbytery Council. Awesome. Thanks, Elaine. Katie Riggler. Hi. I'm Katie Riggler. I am a commissioner for Grace Presbytery. I'm a teaching elder at St. Barnabas Presbyterian Church in Richardson, Texas. It's good to see you again, Katie. Uh, Robert, Robert Warren, sorry. My name is Bob Warren. I'm a commissioner for Grace Presbyterian Church, Grace Presbytery, and I'm a ruling really elder at Preston Hall Presbyterian Church, Dallas. Awesome. Glad you're here, Robert. Martin Osei. Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Osei. I'm a commissioner for Grace Presbytery and also the commission partner for the Ghanaian Fellowship at Woodhaven Presbyterian Church. Awesome. Glad you're here. Okay, I know those are all the hands that were raised. Um, I think, unless that got changed. So, oh, I see a couple more. Bill Clark. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Clark. I'm a member of Mission Presbytery, a teaching elder and pastor at Westminster in Austin, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Ruth Hamilton. Go, Ruth. Hey, Valerie. Hello, everyone. Ruth Hamilton. I am a commissioner from the Presbytery of Arkansas, and I am a ruling elder worshiping at uh, Kirk in the Pines. That's Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Super. Thanks, Ruth. Kay Long. Hi, I'm Kay Long. I'm uh, a ruling elder. I'm stated clerk and administration presbyter for Trace Rios Presbytery. I live in San Angelo, Texas, and um, attend St. Paul Presbyterian. Thanks, Kate. Lazara Abernathy. Hi, I'm Lazara Delgado Abernathy. I am an alternate for Grace Presbytery, and I'm an elder at Gethsemane Presbyterian Church in Fort Worth, Texas. Thanks. Matt Curry. Hi all, I'm Matt Curry. I'm a um, teaching elder at large from Grace Presbytery. I'm former pastor of Waxahachie, a central Presbyterian church. I am uh, between calls and I still live in Waxahachie. Thanks, Matt. Ruskin Falls. Yes, uh, Ruskin Falls, Arkansas Presbytery, live in Little Rock, uh, where I serve Pulaski Heights Presbyterian Church. And I don't think I had my hand up because I've been trying to click the blue hand. I couldn't tell that, is there supposed to be a hand show up in my screen or something? Yes, it would show up in the participants list. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't think I ever got, I've been clicking the raised hand and it, I don't think it ever came up, did it? Yeah, that's why I knew to call on you. Okay. And I, and I can see it in, on on your picture as well. I don't know as a host, I don't know whether anyone else can or not, but um, I know as a host, I can see it, so. Okay, so I don't know if I, I don't know then whether I've got my hand raised or not really then. So I? the button should now say lower your hands. It still says raise hand. Huh, okay. I'm get, just for the sake of, um, right tracking everything i'm going to go ahead and lower it for you okay. and then we'll work on getting that uh figured out later right. okay right. ron sato 
Ron Soto, General Presbyter and State Clerk from South Louisiana, and our offices are in Baton Rouge. Thanks. Matt Miles. I'm Matt Miles. I'm the Vision and Outreach Presbyter for Tres Rios Presbytery and pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Fort Davis, Texas. But I'm um, just here to support the Tres Rios Commissioners. Thanks. Kara Herlin. Is Texas the last name or is that just because you wanted people to know what state you're in? Kara. Kara, if you're, I, you're muted, so you need to hit your unmute. Okay. Um, Texas is just where I am. I'm okay. in Mission Presbytery and I'm a clerk of session at First Presbyterian Palacios, Texas. Super. Thank you. Lyndon Olson. I am in Grace Presbytery and I'm an elder at the First Presbyterian Church in Waco, Texas. Awesome. So glad you're here, Lyndon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I, Lynn Hargrove, you didn't raise your hand, but. Well, I, I was in this, I need Forbes to mute, or to turn off his volume. practice folks this is practice for right, everyone baker and i are sharing the room and so we, he had his volume on and so i could hear it over there and didn't want feedback hi i'm the um the general presbyter and state of clerk for administrative process for the presbytery of new covenant we are sitting here in our office in houston texas thanks lynn so that's a lesson to everyone too to be in the same room can be really hard even if you're on two different devices uh sally watson you waved at us earlier. I did. I did. Hey, I'm Sally Watson. I'm the General Presbyter for Mission Presbytery, which is the Southern Fifth of Texas. And I'm uh, uh, calling in from home in San Antonio, where we're about to get our third storm in three days, I think. Oh, no. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. And we heard from Tim Blodgett earlier, right? Tim, did you? I don't remember if you... We've been through a few people. I don't remember if you introduced yourself or... I did. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Tom waved at us. We'll let Tom introduce himself. Hi, I'm Tom Riggs. I am the Administration and Communications Coordinator for Senate of the Sun, coming to you from my home in Louisville, Texas. Thomas also runs the Senate's Communication Services Program. So if you're from Mission Presbytery, Eastern Oklahoma, Indian Nations, Arkansas, which other ones? Thomas is responsible. Pines, that's right. Pines, is, South Louisiana. Thank you. In South Louisiana, he's responsible for your communications. Um, Thomas makes us look better than we deserve. <laughs> Mr. Fabulous. Okay. Is there, at the risk of you know mass chaos, is there anyone that did not have a ch a chance or an opportunity to introduce themselves? I think we got everyone. I think eventually everyone found their raise hand button. And if that's not the case, Valerie? yes. Valerie, can you hear me? I can. My name's Ron David. Where did you raise your hand? Um, I have so, nothing on my screen that says raise your hand. Right. So if you will go to the bottom of your screen and click on the icon that says participants. Yes. It will open a window. Look at the bottom of the window and it says raise hand. Okay. There you go. So Ronnie, introduce yourself for me. My name is Ronnie David. I'm clerk of session at Mount Vernon P. Ridge Church in P. Ridge, Arkansas. I'm a ruling Older commissioner for the Presbytery of Arkansas, of course. Hello. Yeah, you're you're coming in and out, but we but we can hear you. 
Okay. Want me to do that again? That you're from Arkansas. P. Rich, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. We got gotcha. you. Thank you. Is now you can go ahead and hit the same button that will lower your hand. This is practice for everyone. Um, is there anyone else that we may have missed? Awesome. I note that um, Lucas uh, put in the chat box a really helpful tool. Um, if you can't get to your mute button quick enough or you just want to speak, you know, uh, um, for a second, you can hold your space bar down and that will temporarily unmute you as well. Okay, so just another little trick um, of Zoom. So we got to practice some stuff. That was not nearly as bad as it could have been. So I hope you feel good about that. <laughs> um, okay, so the first, well, not the first, the next thing that we want to do is share with you a video that will give you some basics. So if you will bear with me just one second, I'm going to set us up to do that. <laughs> You've been called to serve as a commissioner to the 224th General Assembly. This assembly will make history. Wonder what that looks like? So do we. We'll give you the basic tools you need for any General Assembly, and the GA Meeting Services staff will provide you with the rest. We do know it doesn't have to look like this. You should have all the tools you need by the time the meeting comes around. So let's get started. You should have already received an email from meeting services staff about technology and required training. So this is a reminder that you'll need internet access and at least one device with a large screen or even two screens. Don't forget there will be required training for all commissioners and corresponding members in June. We can show you how to get around PC biz and get familiar with the business. But before we do that, let's talk about the PC USA. Just like members of your church, it's helpful to have the basics of who does what and where. Basically, the General Assembly reviews the work of Synod, resolves controversies in the church, is responsible for matters of common concern for the whole church, and serves as a symbol of unity for the church. The General Assembly, the body for which you will serve, is the center of the system. It's not just a one-time event. Your service as a General Assembly Commissioner lasts until the convening of the next GA. The General Assembly consists of commissioners elected by presbyteries. Half of the commissioners will be ruling elders, half teaching elders or ministers of the Word and Sacrament. Few will ever have been commissioners to the General Assembly before, but most will have served in one of the other councils of the church, the session, presbytery, or synod. You'll also notice advisory delegates and corresponding members. There are four categories of advisory delegates, young adult, theological student, missionary, and ecumenical. Corresponding members are those holding or having held certain offices of the church former General Assembly moderators, stated clerk and specific agency staff and boards, synod executives, and members of the Advisory Committee on the Constitution. There are six agencies of the PCUSA, the Office of General Assembly, or OGA, Presbyterian Mission Agency, PMA, Presbyterian Investment and Loan Program, or PILP, Presbyterian Publishing Corporation, PPC, the Presbyterian Foundation, and the Board of Pensions, or BOP. Let's take a look at each. The Office of the General Assembly, headed by the stated clerk, is the ecclesiastical arm of the church. The Office of the General Assembly carries out all constitutional and most ecumenical functions at the General Assembly. It is the bus that drives the denomination and is the only agency funded solely by per capita dollars.
OGA is where offices like preparation for ministry, church leadership connection, and immigration services and mid-council ministries are housed. All committees and commissions formed by the General Assembly are resourced and paid for through OGA. And all arrangements are made for each General Assembly meeting by the people in General Assembly meeting services. We literally couldn't do this without the staff of the OGA. Mission programs are carried out by the Presbyterian Mission Agency, which supervises the work directed to be done by the General Assembly. PMA receives a portion of per capita and is primarily funded by mission giving, special offerings, and the development efforts of staff. PMA is where ministries like Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, Peacemaking, Intercultural Ministries, Vital Congregations, Worship, Evangelism, and World Mission are supported. PMA also holds Presbyterian News Service, Mission Engagement, and Diversity and Reconciliation Ministries. The Presbyterian Investment and Loan Program partners with churches nationwide to create environments that support mission and ministry by providing financial project consultation, low-cost loans, and opportunities for individuals and councils to invest in the church. PPC is the self-funded denominational publisher, but the materials it issues cover the spectrum of modern religious thought and represent the work of scholarly and popular authors of many different religious affiliations. The Presbyterian Foundation works to develop gifts and manage funds of congregations and other ministries to develop communities of generosity among their members and constituents, providing people with an opportunity to realize their philanthropic goals through giving and investment options. The Board of Pensions offers medical, pension, retirement, and other benefits to churches, mid-councils, and affiliated organizations. While not an agency of the church, the Presbyterian Church USA, a corporation, is a corporate entity of the General Assembly. In essence, A Corp is the business office of the General Assembly, enabling us to conduct any number of transactions with the secular world. A Corp, through the staff of the Administrative Services Group, provides services like finance, translation, and risk management. The primary client partners are OGA and PMA. Services are provided to other agencies and councils on a contract basis. Together, all of the agencies and organizations elected by the General Assembly and empowered by the Holy Spirit work together with councils to support congregations in fulfilling their call to the great ends of the church. Okay, so are there questions about the basic system? Well, hold on. <laughs> well, this is what happens when things go wrong. Sorry. My uh, YouTube was going off in the background. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about the basics of the system? You're going to need some, if not all, of that information as you begin to weed through um, the business of the General Assembly. Will that be available to us after this Zoom call as well? I'm sorry. Uh, well, well, the information that was on there, will, will you send it to us so we also have it to refer to? Sure. So, um, thanks for that question, because that reminds me. I have, um, we've com I have compiled a packet of information for you. It doesn't spell out all of those things, although the video is available on the Synod's YouTube channel. Um, I have compiled a packet of information um, that will go out to you after this meeting. Um, included in that is this, um, let me do this a second, included in that is this, 
So I'm sharing with you now um, the actual packet. So this uh, diagram or the uh, illustration is included in that. Also included in that packet will be a list of common acronyms because we all need those. It's kind of a, uh, a dictionary. Um, and there's some other information uh, in there that we will talk about um, before the ends of the meeting. Um, but if you have other questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'm going to admit Scott Russell. Does that help? Okay. Okay, what I want to share with you now is we're going to talk just briefly about the docket of General Assembly and um, go through that real quickly, okay? Uh, who's that message from? Oh, Sally, okay. Uh, let's see, I'm going to share with you the docket. Again, it's in your, in your packet. Yep, that's the wrong one. There we go. Here's the basic docket. And I can zoom that in. You have, this is also available to you on PC Biz, which um, uh, Lynn will be making, uh, will be walking you through here in just a few minutes, okay? We can't PC. see that, Valerie. I'm sorry? I, we can't see that, we just have a gray screen. It's like you need, there we go, thank you. There you go, sorry about that, wait. I'm no gonna try way. this again, sorry. How's that, can you see it now? Yes, thanks. Super, sorry about that. Um, so, the basics of this docket are the first day you, as commissioners, you will be asked to set the stage um, for the rest of the business. Um, you, all of the times, please note, all of the times on the docket are listed in Eastern Daylight Savings Time, which means subtract an hour. So plenary will convene at six o'clock central. And for those of you in Mountain Time, hello, Bill Rose, um, that will be five o'clock, I think. I think I have that right. Um, yeah, so let's see, I'm gonna pause my share. And the first thing that you will consider as, uh, as commissioners, the first thing you'll be asked to consider is, uh, I'm gonna try and I'm so sorry, this is not, there we go. Doing what I wanted to is going to be this item, if I'm gonna bring it up here, is the first committee recommendation. Now, normally what happens in a general assembly is all of the commissioners are assigned to committees and you, will, you would have met or at least been introduced to one another, likely by now or very soon. Um, but instead, the Committee on the Office of General Assembly, um, as they began to work through what this would look like, um, designed it so that those who were originally identified as chairs of the original committees now instead serve as one committee, so there's only one committee in General Assembly, and they have met to um, make some recommendations about the way that this meeting will happen. So there is no, General Assembly had to happen this year according to our constitution, um, and there is really no provision for the way that things are getting ready to happen. So your first piece of business will be approving the way that this is going to happen. I hope that this makes sense. Um, so the um, assembly on committee on business referral um, is recommending 
that you approve, number one, gathering electronically, and number two, that you approve these special rules. Those are that you meet um, and that you all have access for voting through PC Biz, online meeting services, um, availability begins 15 minutes before, all of the things that make this online meeting accessible, you'll be asked to vote on, my guess is, all at one time. Um, the Committee on Business Referral is also recommending that some of the business um, be referred to the 225th General Assembly, that some of the business be received as information at this General Assembly, and that very specific um, reports or um, yeah, reports or um, overtures, that type of thing, be approved. So they whittled it all down. And Lynn's going to go through all of those specific areas and all of that specific business for, for you here in just a minute. Um, so the two probably most, aside from that, the other two most interesting pieces of this that you're going to be asked to look at is, I would suggest to you to look at G, which is, um, the Committee on Business Referral assumes the uh, usual functions of the bills and what would be the bills and overture committee. Um, limiting debate, changing docket, review of minutes, that kind of thing. And H says that commissioner resolutions shall not be received or referred and that there be no new business at this assembly. Um, uh, so, um, Marie, I couldn't enlarge it for you, but it will be a part of your packet that I send you after this, so you'll be able to refer to that. And Lynn is going to show you where to find that on PC Biz. So, um, Lynn, you are up. But wait, that ma madam, 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 Senate exec, uh -huh. uh, what is a commissioner's overture? What does that mean about no new business? I'll let you answer your own question. Okay. <laughs> I just thought it would be important for folks because to know. I don't. I mean, I know what it is, but I I don't know the the polity hoops that have to be jumped through. For okay. That. I just I think that's just an important thing to know. Um, one of the one of the rules to me about general assembly is that you know the commissioners rule. Okay. If there's something you decide that you think is right to do, it will you know it will get done or get considered at least. Um, a commissioner's overture is, let's say uh, the deadline has passed and a commissioner wants the, the assembly to do something to consider uh, that's COVID related, okay? Something that has been, that is, that is very contemporary and has come up on a short leash and they wanted to consider it. Well, let's say that Beeman Floyd, one of my commissioners, wants to get this on the floor. Well, he might, he might go to uh, Chuck Weaver or somebody and say, hey, would you sign this with me? And so if two commissioners from two different presbyteries signed on a new piece of business, it would be considered and it would be referred to a committee. The special rules that Valerie just went over are saying that that can't happen this year. And I think that they're saying it can't happen for sake of time. But let me just say again, commissioners that y'all get to rule the day, you know, and if there is something that you think is important that needs to get submitted um, in the, and the spirit is calling you to raise that, I would say don't ignore that. Thanks, Sally. One of the other things um, included in your packet is an article by the uh, co-moderators of the committee on the Office of General Assembly who um, worked along with other members of what we call COGA, that, and those members include Sally Watson and Lynn Hargrove, um, the process that they went through to consider those. So I think one of the other things that's worth noting is it's not that it was not just about time. The way that this is, um, that the that the docket is designed is not simply about the amount of time that we all spend on our butts and 
you know, in a Zoom call. It's also about the difficulty of deliberation online. And so that that's something to remember too. I'm not pushing or pulling either way, but that's something to remember. So um, unless there are other questions that Sally can answer, um, <laughs> Lynn, do you want to go ahead with the next part of PC Biz and the business? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, let me get Forbes to turn his volume back down. Since we're in the same room. Got it? Okay, much better. Um, so that would be a commissioner's resolution and not an overture. Uh, just, just so we have the right terminology. Um, again, you all have the ability to change the way that the assembly has been planned, um, but we're kind of hoping that you don't. Um, just uh, if you've been to an online presbytery meeting, uh, perhaps you've done that recently, your presbytery may have also streamlined some business so that maybe there's not a whole lot of opportunity for debate. I know that we have a policy coming up at a future presbytery meeting about including uh, transgender. How do, we, how do we have a transgender inclusion policy that honors who that person is as a transgender. And, and our general counsel says, well, we think we ought to do that in person rather than on Zoom. But dif the, the difficulty of debate and discussion is gonna be um, really interesting for this particular assembly. Okay, so that's enough about that. I'm gonna share my screen and take you to PCBIS. Now, I find that PC Biz is really helpful all the time. And it's one of my go-to things because of the resources that are available. Um, and so you can see for this particular uh, assembly, we have the docket, which we've looked at. But there it is, if you want to see it a little bit bigger. And that was, on, so when I clicked on resources, it went to the current assembly. Um, let's see, I can close that one back down. Uh, there's the manual of the general assembly that has all kinds of how we do the assembly. If you want some guidance on parliamentary procedure, or hey, here's the participant list. And there's everybody's name for everybody that's uh, participating from across the country. Now, if you wanted to do that for previous assemblies, look, it goes all the way back to 2006. So let me go to 2018, just because I know this other information is there. Look, there's the business list, uh, the book of confessions in three different languages, the book of order in three different languages. Some of that will also appear hopefully in the 2020 assembly. But if I wanted to know what the book of order said in 2006, I could maybe go back there and look. So I find that this is a really helpful, um, a, a really helpful tool as a stated clerk. Um, so if I wanted to select a committee for this particular assembly, notice it's 2020. Look, there's not really any committees. Usually, let's say we'll go back to 2018. If we wanted to look at committees, look at how many committees, 14 different committees. But this year, there's really only one. And the people that are serving on that particular committee are the folks that were elect or were invited to be the committee moderators and vice moderators um, for, for, this particular, uh, um, for this particular assembly. So if you'll notice, here's the names of them. And look, here's Ann Wilson. And where's she from? New Covenant Presbytery. Anne was supposed to be a, com a, a committee chairperson, but instead, um, or she's supposed to be the moderator of a committee, but instead, um, because we're not doing the other committees, she was invited to serve on this particular one. Look, it's called the Assembly Committee on Business Referral. So they've already been meeting to help decide what business is coming in front of the assembly. Okay, so let's go back uh, to... Um, Let's go back to search for the moment. Okay, so we talked about plenary. Okay, so if you want to see all of the business that was supposed to come in front of this assembly, look, here it is. So as Valerie showed earlier in the document, 
um, what comes up is all kinds of information typically. So this particular motion is to um, approve the election of uh, David Dobson to a four-year term as president and publisher of the Presbyterian Publishing Corporation. And so hopefully that is something that's not going to be very controversial. I think he's already in the job. He just needs to get reelected, kind of like your presbyter, your stated clerk might serve more than one term. And so this shouldn't be a very controversial thing. And so there's a lot of the business that's like that. So let me make that one smaller again. The approval of list of related schools, colleges, and universities. Now I know that there's one on there that might be a little controversial because it's coming up as an overture that's not being addressed and that's about the University of Tulsa. And so the folks from Oklahoma in particular might have some information about that. Um, that so there's, there's a lot of stuff that is just sort of structural. So that's a lot of this, this beginning information. But if I were to go say to um, the second page, we might get into some other things. So here's some information. Uh, the book and Confessions and the Doctrine of Discovery. Uh, that could be a really interesting thing to look at to see what there is. So you click on it, and then what it's going to give you is another document. That's thankfully only three pages long. <laughs> okay, so let me go back up to Mini. So here's the information from the committee on the office of the General Assembly. And so what we did, because Sally and I both sit on that, is that we went through the business that was proposed to the assembly and we came up with what we thought were things that wouldn't need uh, action by the assembly. And so you can see that there's a lot of information there. Uh, the Permanent Judicial Commission of the General Assembly did a self-study. There's all kinds of things there. Um, lots and lots and lots. So um, they went through the alphabet and then added four more letters. <laughs> okay, here's the ones that were have been suggested for action by the, the members of the, uh, the commissioners of the General Assembly. So some of these are going to be not a big deal. So, uh, you know, to, to confirm uh, someone being elected as an assistant stated clerk, uh, Kathy Lukert is already serving as the president of the, the uh, the A Corp, the, uh, the uh, I always get this one wrong, the ASG group. Um, Jim Ristler is already serving as the president of the, uh, the PILP program, the uh, investment and loan. So some of these things aren't going to be very controversial. We hope. We're just doing our best guess. Okay, and then these are the, all the items that we're recommending get referred to the 225th General Assembly hoping that we're going to be able to meet in person in 2022. And so there's a whole lot of business there, which also includes all of the overtures for the most part. Because what we're trying to do is that business that is core and critical to the functioning of the PCUSA at this particular time. So I commend to you PCBiz, play around on it. It's PCBiz.org. Now, what's going to happen during the assembly, and you'll learn this when you do the training before uh, the assembly starts, this is also the tool that you will be using to vote. And so they're going to ask you to go into session sync. Now, right now, there's no items being considered. And so they'll, you'll have a different kind of login, you'll have a different kind of banner, and they will, you will learn how to vote through PCBIS. So there's all kinds of resources here, uh, um, and you can, let's say you wanted to search for the history of um, divestment, that's usually a hot topic, and let's say we're going to no filter that. So it's just going to search everything. Now they've talked about divesting from lots and lots of different organizations in the past, and so you can see it's searching 
and look, there's 10 pages of things that talk about divestment on the PC, on the PC biz. So it depends on how geeky you want to be on this. If you're one of those kind of GA junkie people, but uh, let's say you just want to know uh, something more about it, a particular topic, it's easy to do that through the search. And if you go no filter, you'll find um, it, it, the, um, the history of it since back to 2006. And if you put a filter on it, uh, you can search by assembly. So um, if there's any, if, if, if any questions or anything, I, I commend this, this website to you. I find it's really helpful all year long. So and I'll take questions. I hope that was a, a, a helpful explanation. And I will stop sharing. And that PC Biz is always available. So that history is always accessible. Which is why I use it all year long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but not just to state of clerks and EPs. Right, and, right. Right. It's available to anyone. Yeah. Any questions? You can put them in the chat. Seeing none, let's move on. Awesome. So the next thing um, that happens on Friday is the election of the moderators and Sally and Tim, we're going to talk about that. Sally, we didn't actually talk about whether we want to talk about the process or the people first. Um, the process first. Okay. Um, and, and that's, that's what we want to talk to you about. Ordinarily, you know, folks, folks that submit their nominations by a deadline, uh, at, at a normal assembly, the Presbyterian Outlook would host a luncheon where everybody could kind of uh, get to know the candidates and they would get to answer questions and so on. And then when the time came for the election on the very first day of the Presbytery, then uh, the body would get to ask questions and there would be a round of votes or two rounds or three rounds and finally the election happens. Um, we had a lot of debate on COGA this year about how to do this and uh, part of it was so how are we going to work with all those candidates? You know, and we said it might be easier if we hold the election for the candidates at the end of this assembly and then let them open the next year's assembly. Well, no one liked that idea very much. You know, um, part of the reason I think that they considered doing it that way was, you know, they're like, how are we going to train folks, you know, and do we, do we train all three pair of co-moderators, you know, only to have one, you know, succeed and move on. So finally, we came up with the idea, what if we have the election earlier? And that way we'll know a week before the, the main assembly work begins, who those moderators will be, and the co-moderators will have a chance to do some training with the staff so that when they begin to moderate the meeting, on uh, the 25th and 26th, that uh, they'll feel much more secure in what they're doing. The Presbyterian Outlook is doing us a favor. Instead of hosting the luncheon this year, which we, you know, we'll not get to eat rubber chicken one more occasion, uh, but what they have decided to do is they're going to offer a forum for us to meet the candidates ahead of time. So I wanted to give you those dates if you don't know them yet. Uh, June 10th, which is a Wednesday, um, at 6 p.m., the, the, the Outlook is going to have this, host this conversation that will be held with uh, all three pair of our co-moderators. And this will be a chance for you to get to meet them first and ask the questions you want to ask and so on and so forth. Now, that's on Wednesday the 10th. And then the election is going to happen on Friday, June 19th. So. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. If I may, a word yes. about the Meet the Candidates. Please. Um, that is um, uh, offered and facilitated as a webinar by the Presbyterian Outlook and requires a minimum $10 donation. The Synod is going to meet, is going to make those donations on behalf of all of the GA commissioners from, the, from Presbyteries within the Synod of the Sun. So mm -hmm. after the conclusion of this meeting, I will send the list of names and email addresses of everyone who participated in this meeting, and I will send that to them. So look for an email 
that provides each of you with an individual link to that webinar. Thank you, Valerie. I had no idea that it was, I mean, I didn't know how this was going to happen. I didn't know about the charge on that. But uh, once again, the Senate comes through. Thank you so much for doing that for us. So that will be June 10th. And then June 19th is going to be the actual date that the election happens. Um, by, by then, you know, the, 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 the candidates will all be highly skilled and ready to go, right? Marie, they'll be ready to take off running. Uh, and then that evening, we will know who the co-moderators will be, and they will have a week between the election and the time that the main meeting begins to get trained on all the equipment and the procedures and all that. So uh, to make a long story short, that's, that's how we're going to get to where the new co-mods will be elected. Thank you, Sally. Um, and I would commend uh, Presbytery Outlook Presbyterian Outlook to you. There's a lot of resources on there and a lot of articles um, about all of the, the folks that are standing for co-moderators. Um, I'm going to go through and introduce you to just a, a little bit of information about each of the uh, co-moderator teams um, and a little bit of their background. For the purposes today, we're not going to get into a terrific amount of detail, but again, go check that out on uh, Presbyterian Outlook or go to the PCUSA website and the Presbyterian News Services. Uh, got some good write-ups there as well. Uh, the first set of candidates that announced was uh, Moon Lee and Sandra Hedrick. Um, Moon Lee is a ruling elder from the Presbytery of the Northwest Coast. Uh, Sandra Hedrick is a teaching elder and pastor from the Presbytery of St. Augustine. Uh, Lee has served as a ruling elder, served as a Presbytery moderator, stated clerk, chairperson, moderator of Committee on Ministry, PJC, Mission Council, among other positions. Uh, Hedrick has served as a stated clerk at her Presbytery and as a pastor of Kirkwood Presbyterian Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, they say this, my best gifts would be praying in presence, loving, listening, and encouraging, kind of like a pastor or presbytery leader does. I believe my combination of experience is very broad and, and probably helpful, said Hedrick. I'm a pastor, served as a clerk for seven years, a ruling elder. I've been uh, a confused person in the pew, former lawyer, focused on uh, me uh, mediation for a lot of those years and taught law school. I've taught Sunday school and yoga. Um, and then Lee says this, we have to become more innovative, inclusive, flexible, collaborative. I follow Presbyterian news and notice a lot of stories about innovation, collaboration between churches, new worshiping communities, and even things I've never thought of. I'm totally convinced we have to go down the innovative path, and I think the Spirit will take us down that path. And I think that's going to be a theme that you're going to hear from uh, a lot of the uh, candidate pairs. Um, the second uh, set of moderators to announce, or co-moderators to announce, was Gregory, Gregory Bentley and Alona Street Stewart. Uh, uh, Gregory is a minister and Alona is a ruling elder. Um, they both had a deep embrace of the Matthew 25 initiative that many of our churches have, have lifted up and been become a part of, and they want to better recognize the diversity and the mutuality of gifts around us in the church and in the world. Um, the Presbytery of North Alabama has endorsed Bentley, who's the pastor of Fellowship Presbyterian Church. The Presbytery of the Twin Cities area has endorsed uh, Street Stewart, who has served as the Synod Exec for the Synod of Lakes and Prairies. Um, if uh, Street Stewart was to be elected, um, she would be the denomination's first Native American moderator. She is the first Native American to serve as a uh, Senate exec. Uh, Bentley, who is African American, shared this story uh, in a write up for Presbyterian Outlook. Um, he says, My mother, Juanita B. Hathaway, graduated from the only historically black college founded by a then Southern Church, Stillman, or by then the Southern Church, Stillman College, of which I am alum as well. He said in the announcement, it was the PCUSA that taught me how to blend head and heart to nurture the learning and the burning. And then finally, uh, 
the last set of co-moderators to announce um, Arthur Fullerton and uh, Mary Menard O'Connell. Uh, Mary is with us today, I believe. Um, uh, Arthur is, Arthur, and, and uh, Mary, I'll, I'm going to turn it to you just for a second here in a moment. Um, uh, her name's Marie, not Marie. Mary. I'm sorry, I knew that. <laughs> uh, Arthur is a ruling elder and management consultant from upstate New York. Um, uh, while it's customary for presbyteries to endorse commissioners, standing for moderator is not required, which is what we're running into with all of the uh, Zoom meetings and everything else that we have. Um, they're supposed to have a, a meeting a little bit earlier this year that got canceled um, and pushed to um, May the 30th. Uh, Arthur Fullerton is a lifelong Presbyterian. He's an elder uh, at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Albany, um, who has been involved in work in the LGBT, LGTBQI plus um, issues in PCUSA. Uh, from 2017 to 2018, Fullerton served as the moderator of Albany Presbytery, and from 2016 to 2017 as the vice moderator. He served as a chair of the Presbytery's Board of Trustees and chair of the Ad Hoc Budget Committee, and currently serves as the Presbytery's Permanent Judicial Commission. Uh, Fullerton writes, I'm standing for moderator not because I have all the answers, but because I have the skills in fundraising, communication, strength spotting, and problem solving that our church needs in this time of transition. Uh, Marie, do you want to introduce yourself briefly instead of me reading an article about you? Sure, if that's allowed, <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, uh, yes, so we um, stood for co-moderators pretty late in the game, um, and I have to admit that uh, I was not interested in the position until the church had to address the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and in fact, the crisis is part of what makes it possible for me to be able to uh, stand for co-moderator. Um, I am a teaching elder. Uh, I was a TSAD as well, which I now realize I forgot to put in my bio. Um, but I was able to attend while I was uh, in seminary at uh, New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Jersey. And I loved that experience. Um, and uh, I currently have three kids. And one of the concerns that I have about our church moving forward is that it tends to skew a little older, not intentionally, but sometimes that's a little bit built into the systems. And so this year, uh, one of the dark gifts of the COVID-19 crisis is that more Zoom meetings mean that folks like me can actually do more um, because I don't have to travel away from home. Um, and I'm uh, particularly concerned about um, how the crisis is affecting families, especially families that have two working parents um, who now have the pressure of also educating their kids. Thank goodness schools are closing for the summer. Um, and I'm also really concerned about um, how the gig economy is affecting our part-time uh, ministry workers uh, because I think it's difficult. I've done some of that um, in the course of my ministry and I'd like to see the church um, lean a little bit more into what the, the new economy uh, does towards our future, because I think we're going to have a lot more part-time ministry options, especially in the fallout of our current crisis. Um, I met Arthur through mutual friends and um, really was struck by the responses to his questions, um, and I'm very excited to be able to do this, even if it means nothing more than learning a lot of interesting technology uh, and getting to meet a lot more people. So I'm excited for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you, Marie. As always, we have um, a slate of candidates that uh, I think shows the diversity of our denomination, and I'm very grateful um, for all of those folks that are, are standing uh, for moderators. I'm glad to be able to introduce them to you today. Thanks, Tim. Um, Stuart Smith raised his hand. Yes, Valerie. Uh, I thought it might be interesting for the commissioners to know that besides the connection that we have with Marie from our Synod, uh, Arthur Fullerton grew up in the Presbytery of the Pines in the Warren, Arkansas church. He also was a member for a while at the uh, church in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And Many of you know his sister, uh, 
Reverend Dr. Fairfax Fair, who is pastor at the Presbyterian Church in Pasadena. So the folks in New Covenant may know his sister very well. And uh, just wanted to get that connection out uh, that both, both of these candidates for co-moderator have a connection here with our Senate. But we're not lobbying at all. Uh, maybe a little <laughs> bit. But it's okay. Just information. Thanks, Stuart. Okay. Our, there have been precious few questions this session. So I hope if you have any, um, if you haven't already, um, sent a message to your either executive presbyter or your presbytery stated clerk that you will do so, feel free to uh, reach out to me as well. Um, probably not the best thing on GA business, but I can help you with Zoom, no problem. Um, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, we promised to only keep you an hour and a half today. I have one more thing I want to, I want to offer to you. Generally, every General Assembly, the Synod has a get-together. We would all be able to sit down, have a meal, have a cocktail perhaps, your choice, um, and get to know one another. And we have a, would have an opportunity to, um, to talk either about the Assembly or get to know each other aside from the Assembly. Obviously, we're not going to have that face-to-face -face this year, but we would like to offer you an opportunity to gather together um, via Zoom immediately following the business on Friday, that is the 26th. Um, so our time, that would be about six o'clock. Um, I will share with you a Zoom, invita a separate Zoom invitation from the assembly so that we can do that. You feel free to bring a cocktail. Don't bring a cocktail, bring a Coke, bring a malt, I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> your beverage of your choice and um, come and uh, you know not only get to know each other better but ask questions of one another about what's happening get clarification all of those things it will be an opportunity to do that and you know we'll you can even stand up when you're talking to one another so I will uh, I will send that zoom invitation along with the packet that I'm gonna send to you as well um, are there any questions? We have six minutes before the hour and a half. So if y'all have questions or maybe expected something entirely different from our time together um, and didn't get a piece of information, now would be the time to speak up. Valerie, it looks like Russ, oh, he, well, Ruskin did have his hand up. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask, because you know, it didn't work for me on the raised hand the first round, but this time I, I did, I am able to raise it, and I guess, okay. you just, and you just have to go. Your host just has to be okay. aware enough yeah. to see it. Okay. Yeah. No, I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you. Slow. That's okay. Anyone else? What happens if the proposed standing rules are not approved? Sally, Lynn, y'all want to take that? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> um, I, would, I think it will be a bit of a mess. Yeah, it would be in deep stuff. <laughs> but, it's, I mean, that's up to the stated clerk. If the body feels like that that's not the right thing to do and you don't accept them, then it will be up to the stated clerk and the stated clerk staff to figure out what the next steps are. But, but it would like, elongate the meeting, wouldn't it? Sorry, Scott? It would elongate the meeting, most probably. Yes, and that's that's the worst reason not to vote that way. I mean, you know, if you if you feel like that that it, if you really have an objection to it, you know, y'all have been elected as commissioners, yeah. not as delegates. Okay, you know, you are you are be you've been elected to vote as you feel the spirit is leading you, and act it. You know, if you think that that's not the right thing to do, then 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 say so. If you think it is the right thing to do, then say so. It, it, but let me let me offer this caution. Um, we no longer have contracts with the convention center or the hotels in Baltimore, and so if one wanted to do an online or not an in-person meeting, um, we would need to very quickly negotiate a new place and new hotels and travel arrangements for everybody, and that would be um, uh, just a, a cluster. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest that 
that that's probably not the best use of our time and our dollars in this in this particular season. Okay, we so do have a couple of questions. There was one that came through, uh, or Krista sent me a um, a chat message. Um, she said, "There's a lot of reading. What should we prioritize?" My suggestion would be the the um, the business being referred to happen actually at this meeting, and also the business that they're asking to refer to the 225th. Um, that would be like later on the list. Lynn, Sally, do you have other suggestions? I, again, I think PC Biz is your friend at this point, and to become familiar with it and look through uh, what is there, um, it, it would be really helpful. Uh, one of the things I did with my commissioners in previous times is that they would study the business that's coming up in front of their committee and kind of summarize it and, and share it with the other commissioners. I don't know if, if that's practical among the Synod commissioners or not, but you know, to, to read through and see what you're being asked to vote on and, mm -hmm. uh, and, to, and to refer. Right. So Chuck Weaver has his hand raised. It seems to me that the role of the alternates this year is going to be as a silent observer of a Zoom meeting. Is is that right? Um, what what will the what do you see the role for the alternates being this year? It, generally speaking, alternates at general at general assembly itself don't really have a role unless the elected commissioner is unable to, to fulfill theirs. So, yes. Visitor. It, it would be to, to watch the assembly as it's being streamed and keep up with it in case you're called off the bench. Yeah. But with, with not traveling, um, hopefully nobody's going to uh, get, you know, break anything or get violently ill or anything uh, during this particular week because you're staying at home. Great, thank you. Valerie? Yes. Uh, Marie asked on screen, she said that she's wondering whether commissioners can change the docket to bring items to the floor if they aren't there. Um, by that, Marie, do you mean, uh, can you like take things off that referral list and put it on this year's docket? Is that what you're asking? I think that is my question, not because I want to, but my sense is that that's perhaps the only power that commissioners have. And so if they were feeling particularly moved by the spirit, how would they do so correctly under these new rules? Lynn, help me out here. Uh, I think it's gonna be like an omnibus motion that if you have an omnibus motion that comes to your presbytery with these 10 out of the business on it, anybody can remove any one of the items, you know, and say, I'd like to remove this one so that we can talk about it. And it would go over here. I think that's how it works, but I may be wrong. Lynn, do you know? Yeah, that sounds right, Sally. And I, part of the difficulty, Marie, uh, especially with the overtures, is to be able to bring in the overture advocates that would be there uh, to speak, to have it, it, the open hearings and, and things like that. And so uh, because the, it, the commissioners will have um, a password to be able to get into the Zoom, but they're the only ones that get the Zoom code it's very difficult to try and arrange um, the other parts of overtures, the, the, the debate um, and all of that. So that's part of the reason the overtures have not been included this time, uh, just for the practicality of trying to manage open hearings and things like that. I would say too, um, I wanna recommend to you uh, a website, GA-PCUSA. It talks about and gives additional information some insights on um, assembly business little, I do believe that I read there, um, perhaps an answer to your question. And if that's not a full answer that you're looking for, that would be something you could raise during your training with GA. Um, Beeman Floyd. Uh, yeah, I just, um, uh, it may be that uh, you can also look to Robert's Rules of Order um, on this in that uh, it has, it is adopted by the uh, General Assembly of PCUSA. I believe that's correct. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it allows for a suspension of previously adopted rules with a two thirds vote of the entire body. So um, I'm thinking if something came up during the course of the meeting and we had previously um, adopted the omnibus uh, resolution without pulling something out, but there was a real urgency uh, to, to something that had been swept up and deferred in that um, uh, previous adoption uh, that somebody could uh, make a motion to suspend the rules and try to, and try to get a two-thirds vote on it. Awesome. Matt Miles? That's our so last the, question. So. The one thing I, I just wanted to caution folks is that um, you are going to be lobbied. Um, and there is as much disinformation out there as there is actual information. Uh, and the church is not immune to that. So, um, and, and we've had commissioners be threatened uh, before. So um, take good care of yourself in the coming days and pay attention to, um, to actual fact. Uh, and, and like Lynn harped on PC business where the actual information is. I would say if you haven't already as commissioners begun to receive things in the mail, yes, USPS, um, then you can be looking for that. They are making, the General Assembly, Office of General Assembly is making available the mailing list of participants. They are not making emails available, but the mailing list is available to anyone who asks for it. So um, with that, yes, Lewis, info.pcusa.org is a great online resource. So fabulous. Thank you all very much for being here. We're grateful. Thomas, did you have something? Oh, Ruskin Falls? Yes. I just had a, uh, what's, can you be more specific? What does being threatened mean? I, I, that surprises me, that word coming up here. In years past, when, when it, I don't think you have to worry about that, given that this is a not in-person General Assembly. <laughs> so, this is, mainly, um, just take care of yourselves, right? I don't think, again, I don't think you have to worry about physical anything, but um, Chris is asking when are mail, why are mailing lists available? They're always available. I can't answer the question as to why public information perhaps. I'm not sure. Okay. I am not seeing anything else. Any other questions? Thank you so much, y'all, for being here. Expect in the well, it's 5.35, I give up. Tomorrow, <laughs> you'll get an email with a packet in it, and including an invitation to um, join us for hospitality and questions and just downloading on the Friday of General Assembly, okay? If you had technical questions, technical issues with this meeting, please contact your Presbytery offices. If you need to update, do that, whatever you need to do, okay? And Yes, thank you everyone. Have a blessed evening. Thank you.